Kevin Elizabeth, a wedding photographer and bridal boutique owner based in San Diego. And today I'm going to be talking about bridesmaid and kind of groomsmen expenses and what the bridesmaids are responsible for and what the bride is responsible for for paying. So this video can kind of uh, apply to groomsmen, but I'm mostly going to be talking about bridesmaids because I feel like there are a little bit more expenses when it comes to bridesmaids. Um, but first things first, I want to say that when it comes to inviting people to be your bridesmaid, be mindful that when you are asking somebody to be your bridesmaid, you are simply asking. You are not forcing them. There is no expectation that they have to say yes. They can say, I'm sorry, I'm not able to be a bridesmaid because maybe they are not able to afford all of the expenses. Maybe they live far away and just the fact that they have to pay for their flight and hotel is already a huge expense for them and they are not able to afford more than that. So please, if somebody says that they're not able to be a bridesmaid, don't cancel your friendship over that. I have seen people do this. I have seen people become bridezillas online on the internet and say like, oh, I can't believe they said no to being a bridesmaid. Like they're out of my life, they're dead to me. And that is just so ridiculous. Clearly that bride was not really a true friend, friend to that bridesmaid to begin with. So if somebody says they cannot be a bridesmaid, there is probably a financial reason for that and maybe they are too embarrassed to share that with you. So please be sensitive to something like that. Maybe there's a really good reason that they can't be and it's financial. So if you are asking somebody to be a bridesmaid, please consider that. Maybe if you have somebody who is a bridesmaid who you know cannot afford certain things, maybe you are just going to have to pay for that bridesmaid for every single expense that they have and maybe your other bridesmaids can cover themselves. But that one bridesmaid, if it's really important to you that they be a bridesmaid, you offer to cover every single expense for them. And all these other things I'm about to say do not apply to that bridesmaid because you're just going to cover her and that's what it takes for her to be a bridesmaid. So let me just go ahead and jump on in. I'm going to break this down into sections on what the bride typically pays for, what the bridesmaid typically pays for. And then there's one sort of gray area because it's got a little caveat. And one thing that I do want to say is when you are figuring out how many bridesmaids you are going to have, if you cannot afford to, let's say, pay for 15 bridesmaid bouquets, maybe don't have 15 bridesmaids. Maybe cut it down to six bridesmaids or something like that. So if you can't afford to pay for all of the expenses of X amount of bridesmaids, then perhaps don't have that many bridesmaids. You don't always have to have every single bridesmaid under the sun that you think you have to have just because you have to include X person. Just because somebody had you as their bridesmaid doesn't mean you have to have them as your bridesmaid. You don't have to reciprocate. There's no rule that says you have to or just because so-and-so is your cousin, just because they're your cousin doesn't mean you have to have them as your bridesmaid. If you are not that close, you don't have to have somebody as your bridesmaid. You don't have to do anything when it comes to your wedding. Do what feels right to you and don't do anything that you feel like you have to do just because X, Y, and Z. I am telling you, you do not have to do anything for your wedding. And I say that in the kindest way possible. Don't do something if it does not feel totally right for you. Because if you are not that close with somebody, I guarantee you, they do not care that much about being a bridesmaid with you. Okay, so let me go ahead and jump on into the expenses. So the things that bridesmaids are usually expected to cover for themselves, hotel and travel. So getting to your wedding, that is something that a bridesmaid would typically have to cover for themselves. The next thing that bridesmaids usually cover for themselves are their dress. Now this is kind of something that some people think should be covered by the bride and there is a little caveat here. So if the bride is requesting that bridesmaids get this specific dress, you have to buy this specific dress, that is a situation where maybe the bride should pay for it if the bridesmaids do not have a choice. Now some people think this should be still covered by the bridesmaid and some people think that this should be covered by the bride. I personally think that maybe if the bride is requiring that the bridesmaid buy a very specific dress and maybe that dress is kind of expensive, then maybe the bride should pay. I don't know. This one is kind of up in the air. I could lean either way. If you are giving the bridesmaids a choice on what dress they can wear and you're saying, hey, go out and find a dress in this color palette. It's got to be floor length and it has to be in this color palette. 
then at that case, I would say that the bridesmaids should cover it themselves because they have the choice. They can buy a dress for $20 or they could buy a dress for $200. You're leaving it up to them. So in this department, I would say that generally the bridesmaids should cover it themselves, but maybe if the bride is being very specific and she's requiring one single dress, I don't know. It could kind of be the bride that maybe should pay for it, but on a lot of websites that I found, they did say that the bridesmaid should be covering her own dress. So it's kind of up to you. You could go either way on this one. Now the next one are shoes and accessories. This should be covered by the bridesmaid herself. A lot of times bridesmaids will wear shoes that she already has. Sometimes the bride will require a certain color of shoe, but typically the bridesmaid is supplying her own shoes and accessories. Now the next thing is kind of a gray area situation and that is hair and makeup. So this one is kind of my own personal opinion and that is if the bride is um, hiring hair and makeup for herself and so there is a team there on the wedding day and the bride is not requiring that the bridesmaids have professional hair and makeup and the bridesmaid just wants to get it done, then the bridesmaid should pay for it herself. If the bride is requiring that the bridesmaid get the professional hair and makeup, then I think that the bride should be the one paying for it. If she's requiring it, then I think that that should be covered by the bride. That's just my personal opinion. I paid for my own bridesmaid's hair and makeup. There was a minimum required by my um, bride, bridal hair and makeup team and I just paid for it for my bridesmaids. Um, I wanted them to have professional hair and makeup because I wanted everybody to look their best um, and I just thought it was a really nice treat to treat them to. So I paid for it for them. I only had two so for me it was really easy. Um, but I think that if the bride is requiring it then she should be the one paying for it. I think if it's optional then it's up to the bridesmaids to pay for it themselves if they want it otherwise they can do it themselves. So that's kind of how where I stand on that. If it's required, then the bride should pay for it. So for the things that the bride should pay for, that's bouquets. Bridesmaids should not be paying for their own bouquets. It's something that the bride should definitely be paying for. Also, the bride should be paying for transportation on the wedding day itself. So any shuttles or any Ubers that have to be taken, that's something that the bride should be paying for herself. Um, or like the parents, whoever's paying for the wedding day should be paying for those wedding day expenses. Um, any gifts for the bridesmaids, so if she's gifting them a robe or jewelry or something like that, that should also be covered by the bride. So those are really the biggest expenses on the wedding day. There might be little miscellaneous expenses, but for the most part, I have covered pretty much everything that you might see. Now, if you're talking about groomsmen, um, any like rentals, like tuxedo rentals for the day, typically the groomsmen are going to be paying for that themselves. Um, and then again, transportation on the wedding day, that's going to be done by the groom. Um, so these are all the things that are pretty much covered um, for expenses for the wedding party. So I hope that you guys um, are now a little bit more educated on who pays for what. Um, again, the thing about the dress that's kind of up in the air. Um, my personal opinion has already been covered here. You guys might feel differently than me, um, but you can decide what feels right for you. You might be a bride or a groom who feels like you should pay for everything for your bridal party, or you might feel like um, you should pay for certain things and they should pay for other things. But when it comes down to things for on the wedding day itself, like a bouquet, that you should always be paying for because that is a wedding day expense. No bridesmaid should ever pay for her own bouquet and then the groomsmen should always have their boutonnieres paid for by the groom or whoever's paying for the wedding day expenses. But anyways, that is pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it educational and I will see you guys next time. Bye.